Hello and welcome to another episode of Just Saying. Opinionated, thought-provoking, hopefully inspiring, a show wrapped around women's issues, Connecticut issues, family, work-life balance, healthy living, and so much more. I'm Lisa Lelis, and let's go around and introduce our six host panel. I'm Erica, Cindy Cartier, Patty Urban, Stephanie Erica, and Dodie Malardo. Hey, and um, why don't Oh, who, Erica, you have the drinks for today, right? I did, Tell yes. So I gathered mint from my garden. Wow. Right. I, garden store, right? A credit to, to Pinterest, because there are a ton of watermelon drinks, and during the summer, I mean, how refreshing is watermelon? Yeah. And actually, the hydration and the fiber in watermelon offers a lot of health benefits. So I put a splash of coconut water, pureed watermelon, mm. some chunks of watermelon, fresh lime, and mint. It's delicious. It awesome. smells amazing. Okay, I don't, nice I don't, I don't nice like job. it because there's no liquor in it. I know. I don't have liquor. I got no rum. You can always add vodka. vodka. Rum ne would be good. Right. Let me get the vodka. Hold on. Vodka. 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 Shame on me. Excess. Those who know my husband, the point they'd of say, drinking you didn't put kettle one in it. I, I'm, yeah, I really should put some kettle in it. And let me tell you something. It's going to be a great party show today mm -hmm. because we do have an exciting entertainer coming on. Oh, yes, so we do. More on that after. But a little bit of hot topics. Okay, it's a topic we really can't avoid any longer. It's all <laughs> over us. Um, what is everyone's take on Caitlyn Jenner as the recipient of the Arthur Ashes uh, Award for Courage at uh, the ESPYs this summer? Well, I think first, just in case people, not everyone knows, that Caitlyn right. Jenner used is, to be used to be Bruce, Bruce Jenner, Jenner right. an Olympic <laughs> gold medal winner, gold medal Olympic yeah. champion, right? Which is think, how he's tied to the ESPYs. Right. Right. She. Do you think people didn't know that? I there are probably well, a few that did didn't make okay. the correlation. I don't like yeah. to assume. Yeah. I don't right. like to assume. Yeah. Well, I, you know, okay. I applaud the fact that he's, she is following what she wants to, you know, to do that, and I support the transgender community. That's not an issue. Yeah. I, I think for me personally, I kind of agree with Bob Costas, um, who spoke out, um, among another, other people, in terms of the award. <laughs> there were some other uh, candidates that um, might have been more deserving, if I can say that the right way, in terms of the courage. There was a young woman who played um, her final game with a brain tumor, brought a lot of awareness to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I'm not, you know, saying that what he did didn't take support and, and courage personally, and, right. and obviously got a lot of support from his family, but there's also, you know, Patty, you and I have talked about this, there's a, this sort of little bit of exploitation. He's got a TV show, yeah. and that's, that's what it. Bruce yep. Cost, uh, yeah. Bob Costas talks about. It's yeah. just a little, doesn't feel yeah. right. Well, yeah. the whole thing didn't feel right to me once I found out that there was a reality show in the works based on yeah. on this, and I, I think it's, it's it just doesn't feel right. It, it, it just seems that it's about money, you know, more yeah. than anything else. We, obviously, yeah. someone yeah. is not going to be uh, to change their their gender for money. Yes. So we know that this Go is who he is, who but, she is now. Um, but having the, having the reality show, uh, who are you, who's going to watch the reality show? Do you think it'll? Oh, it'll be it'll. it'll yeah. I don't watch I'm any sure. reality shows. I, I can't shows, watch so. it. I refuse. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not a Kardashian lover. Sorry, ladies. People are going to yeah. watch it. Not but, it. Uh, you know, aside from the money, I really think that you know, sort of on the other, on the flip side. Um, it does take a lot of courage for, for what he's doing to the transgender community, just for the whole, you know, LBGD uh, community. Um, I, I think that does take some amount of courage. A and absolutely. I respect that. Absolutely. And I considering that. it's the Arthur Ashe Courage Award, mm -hmm. you know, who came out, you know, he died of AIDS, of course, that tennis player came out as gay. Okay. Um, so I think in those in that context, I can sort of see where it's well, we, going. And I think that the TV show might be a good thing for mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think it will. I, 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 I got to rewind this back to him choosing to go transgender. Um, I'm kind of a bit jaded. I mean, think of the, it's the Kardashian family and everything. I read somewhere that it's quite, it, it was a possibility that the entire thing was planned for media exposure. I hope not. Yeah. And I really, I hope truly that. hope that's, that's not the case. No, that's you know, who knows? Crazy. Yeah. I don't. Who knows? Uh, did you Stranger? know he's from Connecticut? Is he really? Yeah. Newtown. Is he? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I, I partially agree with you in the sense that I think the timing all of it was very yeah. well orchestrated. I mean, not, I mean for those people... I'm not saying that's what happened. Right. I, I'm just saying it's, you know, you know yeah. that's what surprised me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's in his heart of hearts... Yeah, it's a shame that 
he didn't just do this for the sake of coming out and supporting the transgender community. There has to be a reality show with it. I know. It just, that's, it just, that, that's kind of in support of it. It's like, whoa, yeah. really? Yeah. I think he yeah. needs a bigger platform, though, for all of us to understand mm -hmm. um, and really open our eyes because yes. it's very new to... To many of us. I so think maybe that, that's to yeah, come. Yeah, but you know what's really interesting? But when all, um, right away with the picture, you know, everybody saw the picture of the magazine. The glam and picture. And right away, um, there was a comedian that, that that night that said, right away, we're already sexualizing her. Like, yeah. see what they do with women? Yeah. They wouldn't do it with a man. Yeah. Isn't nope. that amazing? But, then, but the, that to me. He became a she, woman. And that's it. And that, that was it. She was now subjected yeah. to all that crap. Well, yeah. Plastic surgery, that, yeah. airbrushing, oh, all yeah. of that I'm became an issue. I'm going to make 30% less on the <laughs> yes, <laughs> they should, right? She should. <laughs> I, I heard a, a very That's interesting, good. Um, I heard a, in a talk show, a psychologist had mentioned something which really makes sense, in that sort of what he's going through at 60-something, mm -hmm. uh, becoming a woman, is sort of arrested development, mm -hmm. because he's jumping in, he didn't go through all the stages as we go through as women, where, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. first exciting to wear heels, and you can't wait to wear flats and mm -hmm. sweats, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, kind of, you kind of go through the ebbs and flow, where he had that arrested development, so he's yeah. jumping in at just that peak of stiletto heels and Glam this glamour yeah. and you know it, that's how he not likes all those what women is about. <laughs> no thanks. But, uh, so I thought it was very yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 And um, well I thought it was very interesting that the first professional shot of him was in very sexy yeah. oh, there lingerie. You go. Yeah. Uh, why couldn't it have just been uh, uh, as a businesswoman, not so provoking. Or, 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 I don't get it, you yeah. know? It, because it, it doesn't sell magazines. Right. Yeah. Right. Sexual exploitation yeah. sells yeah. magazines. Yeah. And the Kardashians are a very well old business machine, oh, and yeah. he has learned from the best. And right. this is all very well right. thought out, right. I believe. Right. And, and yeah. you know, and, right. and really, transgendering is something that, you know, it, it's not just Hollywood, obviously, it's, it's transcended into all the communities. And uh, Patty, you wanted to speak on that. It's, it's well, yeah, because, you know, um, I, have, I have teenagers and um, they go to school, and there are many, yeah. not just a few, there are many uh, students who are exploring their sexuality and many who really are identifying as someone of the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. What has mm. impressed me so, my kids have, are friends, yeah, they're and embracing they're it. so yeah. supportive, yeah. And, they, and they'll say to me, Mom, you know, you can't say he anymore, it's a she, and, 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 and whatnot, and I love how children are just embracing this, they're not making a yeah. big deal out of it, no but judgments. more importantly, the empowerment that the person who is uh, uh, identifying as, as, an op, as a different sex, as a different gender, rather, is having support, whereas before they were so depressed, right. they hated themselves. It was self hatred, yeah. Yeah. and now it's just an acceptable. I have to wonder in ten years from now what this topic of this conversation is going to be. They changed back. They stuck yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah. It's increased adoptions. Like, where are we going with yeah. this? Well, honestly, I think, yeah, right? I think the point. kids are just you know, really I don't know. overboard with a lot of this they stuff. Are, but it, they and they're free to choose. And and you know, think about the the the, the new Facebook is right. This on it. The has a lot they, to do with it. They the yeah. gender the social media, yeah. the yeah. allowance social media. of the freedom of speech and exposure and sharing of information and their notoriety so and support, you know, texting. You know, do you read your kids' texts? Because that's pretty scary what they're texting back and mm. forth and Facebook messaging and you know, there's a lot that goes on. Well, the only thing that concerns me, I have young kids, so I'm all about kids exploring. I did it, well, not at all. But, um, <laughs> Elaborate. Uh, <laughs> it's another show. It's another show. It's a friendly but, um, show. But, I, I, <laughs> but we all know, you talk about this, Eric. Erica, that you know, social media is permanent, and it's mm -hmm. one thing to sort of explore behind your own closed doors or within your own self while you're trying to figure things out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing it so publicly, mm -hmm. and then what if it's it's just you know, in some cases, it's not a permanent thing for whatever reason. And I'm not judging. I mean, I have no problem with people figuring things out, and sometimes you need to try something on to see how it fits. Experiment. Yeah. But that's what's a little scary. Is they're, they're putting how out, their right? future out there where yeah. it may not be their future forever. Yeah. Right. You know. Um, yeah. I see that all the time. You know, somebody is 16, 17. They think it's forever, and yeah. it's just yeah. not. Because companies you look at social media when they hire. Yeah. Yeah. I would say don't put anything on social media that your grandmother wouldn't want to read. Mm -hmm. Right. Ooh, that's, a yeah. Yeah. that's a good rule. I like that. That's a good rule. Yeah. Um, anyways, we are so excited today. Uh, today's guest is Nick Fratiani. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
Senior. Um, Make sure. Senior. 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 As you all know, unless you've been living under a rock these last <laughs> few months, uh, Nick is the father of American Idol winner Nick Fradiani Jr. So the Fradiani frenzy will continue here yeah. in our studio right, here. right after this. Don't go away. Hey, welcome back to Just Saying. Exciting news we have here, Dodi. Tell us who's here. I am very excited to introduce our guest for today's show. To many, Nick Fradiani Sr. is primarily known as Nick Fradiani Jr.'s father. And Nick Fradiani Jr., we know, is the American Idol, newly crowned. Okay, But there's so much more to the man who inspired his son's musical career. To my left, Nick Fradiani Sr., my friend. Hi, Jody. Thank and you for having me. You're, oh, welcome. Um, but I also have to interject to his left are two of his incredibly biggest fans oh. and groupies. And I am, my duty today is to keep them calm in okay. his presence. Okay. All right. So welcome. Thank you for being Thank with you. us. Thank um, you. We've heard lots about your son, but today it's all about you. Oh, boy. So what I would like to ask you first is what inspired you to become a mu musician? Oh, wow. Well, music goes back to about eight years old in the Ed Sullivan show and seeing the Beatles the first time. And from that time on, I was hooked. I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I got my first guitar at about nine years old. And, and then I just started learning Beatles songs. And my dream started then. And it's still going here many years later. So you knew so. already that you had a talent for this? I didn't know I had a talent. I knew I wanted to have a talent. I wanted to just sing and, and put a guitar on and you know and run around and be a beetle. And um, that's how it started. So. And how long have you been actually doing it professionally? I mean, actually getting paid for it. I mean, I've been getting paid for it since I'm 14, and wow. I started then. And, and I, where, what, what, I was, what was in, your first gig? Um, actually, we won. Um, I won uh, an exchange club talent show in East Haven in 1969 and I won singing the my first time I sang in front of anybody I did the song to love somebody mm -hmm. and I remember the curtain going up I was 13 years old and we won the first place trophy it was like a great moment and um, from that time on I, I just started that band did well and we started playing and through high school I and I just kept playing and kept playing and kept playing, and here I am today, so I'm still playing. Now you play, you said you played guitar. I play guitar, and, sing. and I sing, I play piano now, I play bass guitar, I do play a lot of instruments, I play mandolin, harmonica. Um, and you have and a set band that you play with, like um, I did for the longest time, but when Nick started to pursue his dream, I actually started to play with his band, so I had to kind of dissolve what I was doing. And now when you see me perform, I play pretty much by myself, solo, and I um, play acoustic things and stuff like that. I'm going to wind the clock back for a second. Okay. Um, at some point, you had a song called Midnight Lady. You want to tell us about that? Midnight Lady, yes. Yeah. Well, first of all... Um, that was before Nick. Yeah, Nick. actually, it was before Nick. That was like 1984. Matter of fact, when I recorded that song, I was told that... Nick was on his way. My wife told me she was pregnant with him. Oh. And that's why I remember that. And um, what had happened was I put out my first single, but I had already been in a band that was called Rhapsody that was very popular in, the, um, in this area in the 80s, early 80s. And we had a, a first hit called Sunset Beach, which I also wrote and sung. And, um, but anyway, that band had dissolved after years of touring, being in Atlantic City and Vegas. And I came home and I recorded my first solo song, which was Midnight Lady, which was a 12 inch disco record and it's got horns i used like it's a big production if you ever want to google it uh, and you'll find it because years later the funny story of this yeah, was it did i almost got signed over this i was that close to getting a record deal it all kind of fell apart right at the last minute and you know another musician sad story but it did happen to me and what happened was um it was on wax and and of course all the stores you know it sold a little bit around here but it didn't do that well and anyway it got to europe and somebody uh early i think it was around i'd have to ask my son if it was 2009 i hadn't even gotten on facebook yet okay so he was on facebook and someone googled him to say or facebook messaged him are you the nick freddy any midnight from midnight lady and he was from france and he kept saying dad these people or asking me, and make a long story short, he found it a day later on this site, and people were selling the record, and it was getting in play, and it's and it was a big hit in Europe. And unfortunately, I didn't have a, a major label 
<laughs> so it, there was no international right copy laws, so I didn't really make out too much on it. But it is popular. If you Google it, you'll see it. And that's just ironic that that's how it happened. And of course, my son would find that. And then actually, that's when his musical career was just starting to begin. And that's how that happened. Oh, that's so. Hey, so. Nick, how do you, how do you um, balance that? Or we were talking about this in one of our production meetings. Like when you, when you have a son or a daughter or anybody that um, wants to go into a crazy business where we know there's no guarantees, you, I mean, you being in it, mm -hmm. it's a tough, how do you ride that balance of, um, you know, do you, do you put, do you, do, you take, do you have something on the back burner or do you pursue? Oh, well, well Nick, Nick had already um, just been doing that because it was like breathing to him. It was like part of our household. Yeah. Music was always going on. So I um, never, it was a no-brainer. No yeah. With him, he was just never going to do it as a career. He had gone, he was, everything yeah. in our family was always about, with him, was sports. Mm -hmm. And he was a great basketball player in basketball. Guilford. and. Right. And he went to college at Wheaton, and he played basketball there. It wasn't until the injury in Wheaton that the guitar uh, started to come out of, the, out of the bag all the time, and he started writing songs, and that was around 2008, and that's when he came to me with it, and that's how it all, and that's when it began. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm going to rewind that clock just a little bit again. Sure. Okay. And um, you started doing performances in all countries, Aruba and all over Correct. the place. And in particular, you were doing cruise lines. Correct. All right. And then um, I understand something happened on the Panama Canal cruise. So why don't you tell Correct. us about the cruises? Well, the cruise line was yeah. interesting because yeah. um, we, it was really nice. I mean, I would be uh, sailing all over the country, I mean, all over the different oceans, yeah. going to Panama. We went to, through the Panama Canal. We'd be yeah. in Costa Rica. And it was all great. Um, but what had happened was, it was there, you know, we're talking the 90s, mid 90s, so cell phones weren't, you know, huge yet. So it was only shipped ashore. So I was missing out on talking to them every day, and I missed my kids. I always was. I'm, I'm a father. Being a father matters mostly to me more than anything that I do. And I wanted, um, I just missed them. And I used to leave both my kids tapes of me talking to them on cassette so they would listen to me. And I would do that because I'd be gone, and I'd be, and anyway, he hit a home run. And he did something, he scored a lot of points in a, and also in a basketball game, and these were all leading up to me being tortured about it, and I finally made a decision that I had to come home. Mm -hmm. And I gave up the touring to come home, and then I was still gonna keep my hands in music with the writing and playing local, but it just wasn't enough to be a full-time musician, so I had to pursue other ways to make a living for a while, and that's how I got into teaching haircutting and all that, but I, at the moment, um, Music still is, I, now that Nick has become who he is, it's bizarre that he's like re-inspired me now. So like his music re-inspires me to want to play every night. Do you, you know. see a big difference in um, your music now? Uh, let's say booking other shows because of, <laughs> yeah. because of your <laughs> yeah. son? It's um, a guess household name it's, now? Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny because, you know, and my shows are twice as busy and... Um, People clapping louder. I'm still so, to me. I sound the same. I'm still doing the same music, but you know, people are really excited about. It. So I guess I'm writing on my son's coattails right now. Absolutely. Which isn't, that, is, isn't that isn't that yeah, crazy? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I'm I'm you know I'm very proud of him and all he's accomplished and the immense talent. I'm just glad that the world's seeing what he really has because I always told him what's hard about the arts is. You could, you know, I know a lot of great musicians that went and never got noticed, mm -hmm. never got anywhere, and they only play for themselves and their soul, just like the artist that paints the picture mm -hmm. that no one ever really sees until maybe it gets big after he's passed. Mm -hmm. And that's how music is. And I always said it takes to be at the right place at the right time. And I'm glad that we pushed Nick to be at the right place at the wow. right time. Now, as a father, I know, you know, because I know you, you're mm -hmm. very close with your family, but yes. you're, you're best friends with your son. Yes. You must miss him terribly uh, now that he's all over the place. Yes. Uh, Do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, oh. it's really, it's hard. And he knows it too, so he's worried about me. He constantly texts me to make sure that I'm doing okay. Um, because we still text and share. And we, you know, I mean, every one of the song choices on American Idol, I was all part of that. And so I was like his coach, you know. But he doesn't need his daddy. He needs to be who he's become, right. the American Idol now, and I think he's going to just do great. 
Oh, I so. think it's, oh, I think it's incredible, really and, yeah. and it certainly has put Guilford on the map. Oh, it sure oh, has. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes. We had the most people turned out for his concert, That's right. the next yeah. concert, than the uh, other. Probably yes, anything, anything else. Anything else. Anything else. Yeah. Yeah. It was and, of wonderful. course, Lisa and I were like, at <laughs> every biggest cheerleader. Every yes. 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 That's great. I'm really going on and on. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, was, thank uh, you. Yeah. I mean. But I enjoy seeing you play. At uh, a bunch of places that you've been to, okay. and I enjoyed it. But, you oh, know, great! Everywhere you go, it's right. it's fun to watch the crowds get bigger and yeah, bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been it's been fun. I mean, I'm I'm excited because I'm writing some new stuff, and I'm going into the studio tomorrow, and I'm going to be working on my own stuff too. And hopefully, exactly. you know, and I'm I'm really excited about music. I feel like I've been rejuvenated for it, That's and awesome. and I'm just gonna follow it out. I'm very excited about music. Well, you know? how, how is all of this? How is all of this affecting um, your, the rest of your family? Well, it's, it's been hard because you know a lot of people ask. They want to talk about it everywhere you go, mm -hmm. and you know, and we say the same thing over and over in a nice way. And you know, and we're we're kind of people, and would never be rude to anybody about it. But you know, and then people want to know when could I take a picture with them, and could I. Could I do this? I mean, I was telling you guys when you buy the people are leaving stuff on my mailbox and my lawn. Could this one sign this and that? And you know, it's we're doing the best we can. And then, then it's hilarious because I could go out to my car and you see people taking pictures of our house and it's just crazy. Yeah. So, so it is pretty bizarre to see all that. But you know, Nick is a humble kid and he's missing that. Like you heard, you know, he has a hard time performing with me because. If he came out to see me in a show, people want to just harass him, and he couldn't even get to right. do a song with me, and it was kind and of we, annoying. We you know? yeah. witnessed that, that yeah. night. Yeah, that and it was, was just funny. hard. That was hard on me. But you know what? We're gonna. We got some plans to do some new stuff together, so cool. it's gonna be okay. Well, we wish you the best. Thank um, you. We wish your son the best too, and and we want to keep tabs on you. So Absolutely. We will be following your career. I appre and appreciate you back that. Again in the Thank future. you for having me. Thank you for having me. It was so great. We'll be back with a wrap up of today's show and today's mailbag. Hey, welcome back. Are we all frenzied out? We Nick are. Is yeah. Isn't he, isn't he fabulous? He's wonderful. so sincere and so oh, what an down to earth. Such a so great, great, great him. guy. Very real. Yeah. Well, he's Italian, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and you just truly, you truly see after talking with him where Nick Jr. gets it. I mean, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's amazing. It's, it's just a real deal. deal. It's a real deal yeah, for yeah, sure. Monica, what do you have to share with us today? Oh, Patty and I stopped by the marketplace at Guilford Food Center. So we've got some florets, some chocolate croissants. Almond croissants and macaroons. Show to the camera. They've just really like good. recently mm. redone I mean, their entire food market. It's stunning inside. You can get sandwiches. They're opening a new salad bar. So the salad bar is back by the um, where you get Ooh, the sandwiches. And you can pick your greens. They have five different greens to choose from. It comes with carrots and some add ons. So but then you get to choose, yeah, the basics. And then you get to oh, add green. four. Um, specials on there and a protein, so funky. Very hard like to special diet. Specials, <laughs> special uh, salad add-ons for a one-set yeah, price. It's not a weighed <laughs> price. It's oh, gorgeous. You have to check Ooh, it out. It is, oh, it is good. beautiful in there. Oh my god! You can sit there. You can drink, eat, bring friends to get to go. So, Patty, what else are people saying on? Uh, on well, um, well, we got we got um, something from uh, Darlene who who wants to know how we're all doing with our lemon water challenge. Oh, I do it, <laughs> and I have a cousin in Boston; she does it too. Okay. Well, I tried it, to do it, but I, I, unfortunately, I went to Disney and I got this shirt. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, my kids think I'm an ATM. <laughs> oh, I'll think of mom. So um, I was not drinking uh, lemon. lemon water. No, no. on your trip. <laughs> oh. I don't drink much water at all ever. I mean, if I have two glasses a week, that usually I just don't so have water. The challenge. I did flunk the yeah. challenge, but I have been getting better. Good. So I'm trying to at least have That's one glass good. a day. Good. Better's good. good. Better's mm -hmm. good. I do, and I remember I've got it. Just hasn't become habit yet. So I think I need someone. Um, in the beginning, the first first few days, we were we, we were, were calling each other. Each other. We were texting each other. Don't forget the lemon water. Did you do it, Tony? It struck fear in my heart. <laughs> yeah. The coffee was screaming at me. Oh in yeah, the you can't get like, the I coffee. can't. I can't. I can't. It depends on the night before for me. <laughs> how badly I need the coffee. I'm I like, really oh, want coffee. that coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't, you, couldn't you just add lemon juice to a bottle of water, leave it by your bedside, yeah. so when you wake up in the morning, you just have it. That's yeah. what I did, right? And then, oh, then it's right what? there, and then you get up and you go have your coffee. I wonder right. if you could put some lemon juice in the coffee. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I would probably not <laughs> buy that, Daddy. It's just, it's just more acid. For the 
those who missed it, we're referring to our pilot episode, our first episode, where we kind of challenge each other to take a, um, a lemon water challenge, which is supposed Ooh, to be the one. best mm. thing upon mm. waking up to drink a glass of water with lemon and then wait 20 minutes before breakfast or coffee or anything mm -hmm. else. And we went through a, little, a list of health benefits. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we'll have to... The, Resurgence of our of our challenge. We'll right. get back one on track. Next, one of the next questions that we got from a viewer named Lisa uh, was referring to our guest from the previous episode, Ann Nyberg, and mm -hmm. they wanted she wants to know when Ann's new book is is actually coming out. Okay, and October fifteenth. Oh, October fifteenth. October fifteenth, yep. twenty fifteen. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. so that, yeah. that'd be great. Good. So a couple yeah. months. Yeah. yeah. And definitely hook into her social um, networking mm. because you'll find yeah, out. Yeah, follow her on networkconnecticut.com. I'm pretty sure she'll be posting updates on that. And she's very active on Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, what would you do if you had it? How would you handle instant fame? Talking about Nick mm -hmm. Fradiani, who was just here. Mm. Um, do you think it would change you? I don't, I don't. They always say it's it does. It's easier to say, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think so. Well, I, I don't, don't think so. Well, I think it depends I, on. I love what talking your age to people. Is. So if people are going to show up and start talking because that's the I press, I, you know, I have no problem with that. Um, financially, I've never been monetarily, you know, dependent on money for mm -hmm. happiness. So if it showed up. I'd probably be giving it to people. I'd probably... Yay, me! Oh, I... I, 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 I don't She's think it would change me because, honestly, the, the, uh, you ladies at the table probably have... I have family and friends that would just jerk me back to reality yeah. so fast. Like, there would be so many come-to-Jesus moments every time I try to get out of hand that I, it just wouldn't be called for, so... It was just, it was just nice to see how Nick is yeah. just so down-to-earth. Him yep. and his son yeah. are just yep. wonderful. Well, you know, his son is 29 years old, and, and he has been pretty much uh, performing for a decade mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. And he's also, for, you know, he's not a 16-year-old winning this thing. He's also, yeah. uh, he has his bachelor's degree. He's right. got his master's degree. I mean, he, he's a smart close man. Close-knit family. Yep. Yep. Close-knit family. Yep. I think yep. they will keep him grounded yeah. big yep. time. Yeah. And his friends. Yep. Right. But I think the biggest thing, you know, the older you get, the, the more you um, know how to be around people and yeah. you understand who I hate to say it, the good people are and maybe the not so trusting people. I think the key is when you hear from a lot of people that have become famous, whether it's overnight or over a period of time, whatever it is, that you learn who you can trust, who you can't mm -hmm. trust, who you can let in your inner circle and you find very much that you pull back. That's why right, I think right. a lot of times you see famous people that they tend to be a little more reserved not right. because they aren't don't want to be open but they mm -hmm. that you got to be especially in this day and age it's crazy mm -hmm. well, so it's keeping the quality in your yeah. life cutting yeah. out yeah you know, the refresh so, you know it was a wonderful show and i would say that today's takeaway tip is to never stop believing in your dream. Mm, right. um, yes. As Napoleon Hill once said, it's one of my favorite quotes, mm -hmm. if you can imagine it and you can believe in it, you can achieve it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just saying. Just, just saying. saying. Just saying. Special thanks to our guest, Nick Fradiani Sr., Stephen um, from Bird's Nest Salon, our food donation from the Marketplace at Guilford Food Center, from all of us here at Just Saying. See you next time. Cheers. Until then.